and record. Welcome, awesome. Thank you all so much for being here for step two. This is the writing phase. I created this step three, three step program uh, all about appellate brief research. I felt as though it's kind of a, a complex concept to tackle. It's hard to think about what you need to know when you're really tackling this, this really big project at, for your first time. And so I wanted this, this three-step process to really kind of help you understand the nuances associated or the tips and tricks associated with each step of this process. To start off today, what I want to do is I want to show you some appellate brief research resources that I think are going to be completely um, helpful and very valuable to you as you're going through the writing process. The next thing is I want to talk about a few common pitfalls. So when you're writing things to remember uh, and, and things to really keep in mind in terms of citation and the writing process. Uh, we'll also find how you can search for other briefs in your circuit or in your district to kind of compare from an appellant or appellee uh, side of things. And then I want to introduce you to an add-on. It's called Lexus for Microsoft Office. It's a Word add-on that you can download that helps with some of the more nitty-gritty stuff, including citation checking, quote checking, and table of authorities building. Um, and so we'll spend a little bit of a time introducing you that to that today, and then we'll talk about it a little bit more in depth uh, on next week's session in the revising session, because that's where we really want to make sure all of that information is aligned and we're not missing anything. So let's start with when you're beginning to write, right, you've got your research and you're thinking about writing, it's really kind of helpful to understand the breakdown of what an appellate brief looks like. Now, you might have gotten an example from your professor, um, either an example that is you know, tailored to the problem or an example that's in your jurisdiction. But there are resources, both other example briefs to look at and other documents that you can look at to really help you out. And to find some of that material, we're going to use the Explore Content Pod. Surprise, right? And to do this, what I want to, to want to show you is I wanted to show you a few resources that I think are really, really helpful. And to look for it, we're going to use the Explore Content Pod here. And all I'm going to do is in the Sources tab, I am just going to do a search for Appellate. And when I do this search for appellate, the reason I'm doing this is I want you to see all of the information that is associated with federal practice and information, uh, not only in terms of what you have available to you, but just information that might be really, really helpful for you. So this is my search for appellate. And notice here in the sources tab search, it is looking for anything associated with this. So the appellate search is going to give me content that has appellate in the title or even content that has appellate contained in the source itself. So there are a few things that I wanted to show you. First of all, the appellate advocate, this source right here, is a really, really great source in terms uh, of content associated with articles about appellate work. This is a great resource for you. And here in the appellate advocate, we could do a search for writing, editing, and get some really good context in terms of appellate research. So that is one source that I wanted to share with you, but we also have appellate practice in federal and state courts. I've actually clicked on this for you and uh, shown, shown you what this is. This is a source that I particularly used quite a bit in law school. It gives you a breakdown of individualized chapters, including some of the standards of review, but chapters specifically 10 and 11 are really, really helpful. 10 and 11 are associated with oral arguments and writing of appellate briefs. Chapter 10, which goes through the preparation, right, the research, what, uh, you know, information you might need, as well as the drafting of the brief, drafting an outline, the style considerations, drafting considerations as well. This is a really kind of helpful secondary source that kind of puts some, some context behind what you've been talking about in your LW2 courses. So appellate practice in federal and state courts is another source that I wanted to, to highlight for you in terms of some good context when you're about to sit down and, and write concepts and constructs that you want to have in your mind before you sit down and begin working on your brief. Additionally, if we're scrolling through here, 
There is a, a few different sources that I think is, are really, really helpful. There are state specific sources. So you'll notice that there are Illinois state and local federal court rules. Um, there are sources for a lot of jurisdictional materials. So as you're scrolling, scrolling through this, if you find a, a certain jurisdiction that you wanna review for appellate advocacy, there is a lot of helpful information here. Uh, I am gonna go to the next page because there's something else that I wanted to show you in here as well. Uh, as we're going through here, um, I want you to, to specifically be prepared for the LexisNexis Practice Guide for Massachusetts Appellate Practice. Um, I know that this is, you know, one of the issues is in district court for Massachusetts, so I might want to pay attention to any, any information that I can have regarding Massachusetts brief writing, M Massachusetts practice, that might be very helpful for me. Um, and then finally, on the very, very last page here, we have one additional source that I wanted to share with you as well. And that is, where did it go, where did it go? Where did it go? Sorry, I've, I've lost it on this page here. The US Court of Appeals briefs and motions here. So you can actually source and cite to Court of Appeals briefs and Court of Appeals, uh, both district courts and pleadings. So if you're looking for a specific source, right, either the US Court of Appeals or, uh, you know, if you're looking for the, the original brief in the district court, you can actually search for Court of Appeals briefs right here using the advanced search icon. And notice that all we've done here is we've just narrowed down and so we can see additional kind of constructs associated with this topic. So maybe, for example, in this in this issue, and I'll show you a different way to search for this as well. We could look for something like uh, public school, your public school and speech search here, and we can see some some issues regarding speech and public school. Uh, I'll even turn on my graphical view here so you can kind of see. This is a Seventh Circuit brief. We've got a uh, brief of defendants, brief of plaintiff. And so why would I recommend taking a look at some content like this? Well, it's pretty simple, right? When you're working on a brief for the first time, when you're understanding uh, how to outline that brief and how to structure it, there's nothing more helpful than really getting a look at what the brief looks like. We've got a table of contents, right? A table of authorities. What does this look like for that? Um, what does a table of authorities look like? How is it set up? And then how is the actual brief structured, right? We can even look here. We're looking at the Mayor versus Monroe County School District. Notice there's an original source image section right here in the about this document. If you, if you see how the brief is actually laid out in Lexis and you're like, mm, this is nice, but I want to see exactly how the brief is, this will actually be searchable here for you. So the original source image, if I click on this, this is going to be actual PDF that was filed here, okay? And so this is a really great way for you to take a look and see how does, in this instance, in this jurisdiction, how is this brief laid out? What is the structure of the brief, right? What is, not only do I have a, you know, what does the table of contents look like, but specifically, right, how is, the argument placed? How is everything laid out so I can really see what is, what is here and what do I need to note for my brief's structure? Again, this is, we've done our research, right? We've, we've compiled the, the arguments that we think might be helpful. We've maybe even started creating a list of, of different cases and authorities that are going to be in our table of authorities. But putting this into context and being able to actually see what are some examples of some briefs that may even touch on similar issues to mine? What, what can I glean here for this supporting material, right? So do, do not be afraid to, to use this, this Court of Appeals uh, source as a way to find this, this context and this content here, not only in the, the Lexis layout, but of course the legal source image as well. So that's kind of one of the things that I wanted to begin with is just highlighting a few sources for you. And I'm gonna go back, I just wanna show you those sources again, right? So the main, the, the main two that we talked about before we looked at the US Court of Appeals and our sources, right, is on the first page, we talked about the appellate advocate, which is a very, very helpful uh, secondary source. And then we talked about appellate practice in federal and state courts which this is a secondary source with, with table of contents where we can see different chapters about the writing process, the drafting, some style considerations and more. And then we went to the very, very last page here in our sources section in the Explore Content Pod. 
And we just did a source, a search for US Court of Appeal briefs. And that enabled us to actually put in some of our search results and find both appellant and appellate briefs that we could actually review both on Lexis or look at the original source image. And again, reviewing those briefs, getting examples of the layout, right? Even fonts and font stylings, because as you'll note, right? There are rules behind font stylings, uh, behind cover pages. We wanna make sure we're following those rules and procedures, getting examples in our district and what would be um, what we need to submit in our district. That's going to be crucial to our writing process. Any questions about any of that? Again, this was just me using the Explore Content Pod, right? This is why I recommend that Explore Content Pod is I ran a blanket search for a pellet, right? In the Sources tab. And I received over 250 results on different documents or different sources that are referenced in terms of appellate advocacy and found three already, right? The appellate advocate, appellate uh, practice in federal and state courts, and the ability to look at U.S. Court of Appeals briefs very, very quickly to find materials that might help me as I begin my writing process. Now, we've got a foundational understanding, right? We, we've created kind of that foundational knowledge. We have a better understanding of what the structure and the appearance of my brief would look like. Maybe we've even read a little bit about the uh, in the appellate advocate or appellate federal practice. We've got some context behind what information we need for that, right? But now we need to look at things and now we need to start thinking about the individual writing process. We need to think about when we're writing, what are some things that we need to be aware of? Now, I wanna introduce and talk about a few pitfalls, okay? Things that you need to keep in mind. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to run the search that we ran in our last session, right? We ran this public school and speech search again. And then I did my search within results. We've done our search select filter, right? Our search is a public school and speech. We're going to keep it in cases and I'm going to filter down with video. Okay. We're just going to pull up that JC versus Beverly Hills Unified School District case that, that I found really helpful. Now, I want to talk about a pitfall. The pitfall is that we say we've, we've, we're reviewing this case, right, and we're creating that outline and we're building all of the information, okay? The pitfall is this. There are actually two that I want to touch on, but the first pitfall, I did this way too many times and I'm hoping that maybe this can save, save some headache, okay? If you're going to be looking at a document, right? If you're going to be going through a document and you're going to maybe be building your outline. So let's say for example, we're using JC in our argument section, okay? And we find a, a section of JC that we wanna highlight. Now, one of the things that, that students do quite often that I did quite often is I would highlight this and I would say, hey, I'm going to copy this and I'm gonna put this in my outline. So I'm gonna copy, right? And I'm gonna hit copy like this and then I'm going to put it in my Word document, right? Hold on. <laughs> Hold on. There's a different and better way that we can do this, okay? Instead of using your browser's copy function, notice how we have the ability right here to actually use a copy within Lexis. Let me show you what happens when I do this. First, I'm going to show you copy advanced, okay? What it's going to show me is that if I'm copying this format, it's going to ask me how I want my standard to be. What do I want my format standard to be? I can do standard, standard is blue book format, or I could do all wood in case I need that. I'm gonna choose standard, I'm gonna choose blue book format, and I'm gonna do, uh, I could do copy citation as a hyperlink for my outline, that might be kind of helpful, or I could choose italics or underline for my case name. I am, I've always been an underline guy myself, and so that's what I'm gonna do, okay? And I'm going to copy this and put it in my outline. And so I'm going to do copy and close so that when I open my Word document, and I'm just going to show you what this looks like. You can't see it right now, but I'm going to show you in a second. When I open my Word document, I'm going to switch so you can see my, my entire screen here. I have this copied and I have the citation and not only do I have the citation folks, I have the pin site right here. Okay. So instead of copying, like we're so used to doing with, with copy and, you know, control C, or if you're on a Mac, uh, you know, weird looking Apple symbol C, right. And we're copying and pasting it here. What you've done is if you're building your outline out and I'm doing argument one here, 
I have captured the exact citation, not only the language, but I've captured the pin site. Save yourself the headache, folks. Please don't do the, the quick copy on your browser here. Don't do this too quickly and forget that you have the functionality in Lexis or in Westlaw to really copy this and grab it quick or grab it advanced, right? Now, notice when I do copy quick, it's just gonna copy based on the settings that I've applied. So when I put it in my, my, my document again here, it's just gonna grab whatever settings that I've applied. What I like to do just for, 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 for the sake of, of practice and to make it easier on myself is I like to go in advance and make sure my settings are, are applied and I'm capturing it correctly, okay? So that's pitfall number one is that we, we go in our document, we go too quick, we control C when we highlight something and we ignore the pop-up and we forget that we can actually get a pin site very quickly, right? And then we get the whole case and we get any attached ids that might be associated here, okay? Pitfall number two. These are the two main writing pitfalls that, that I found really troubling when I was building my outline and when I was transferring or when I was actually in the writing process of my, my brief, right, that I was missing, okay? This is pitfall number two. Second pitfall is just relying on copy citation. Now, I love copy citation. I think it's a great, great tool, right? But what copy citation does is copy citation gives you not only the full site, but it also doesn't pin cite any information that you've grabbed. So if you're, if you're opening this document, if you're citing to JC versus Beverly Hills, right, um, and you're citing to a specific section of JC, a specific area, that needs a pin site under Blue Book format. And so if I'm just relying on Blue Book format and I'm only using this copy citation, right, this is a fine potential Blue Book format, right, but I may be missing pin sites if I'm citing to a specific area of JC versus Beverly Hills. I saw a lot of students, um, I did this myself in law school where I just would put in uh, for my first writing assignment, first few writing assignments, I would grab this citation and I would rely on it and I would miss a pin site. So don't, don't make that pitfall either. Finally, in terms of copy citation, I also just want to encourage you if you're going to use either of these copy citation tools, please don't forget to check your work, right? These tools are very, very well built out, right? They're, they're incredibly helpful. They do a lot of the legwork for you, but don't forget to, to, as you're gonna go into step three and you're revising, don't forget to go back and, and check. Make sure you're not missing any key content, right? Make sure you're not missing, uh, you know, maybe you mistakenly selected all wood, right? And, and you've got an addition uh, on your citation that you wouldn't need under blue book or vice versa. Make sure your citations do align with the proper format that, you, that you're looking to, to do, okay? Any questions about those, those pitfalls there? Awesome, okay. So now, now let's talk about a tool to kind of make things a little bit easier, right? When we're building out our outline, what we wanna do is we wanna create a structure that makes sense, right? An argument or a flow is where we'll have our topic and then our subtopics or sub arguments, okay? We wanna create something that is going to be going to flow and going to make sense and really going to have our citations where not only is it going to be most powerful for our argument, right? But it's going to help us understand and help the reader understand how our argument moves through the space. We have a tool called Lexis for Microsoft Office that can kind of help us with the process in terms of citations and quotes within our document. And so as we're building, as we're building and going through our writing process, and as we've created our outline and we're structuring our outline and we're structuring our document as we're writing, we have the ability to kind of check and make sure our citations and our quotes correct. Now, this is something that we're gonna dive into quite a bit in our revising process in step three next week. I'm gonna show you how each one of those tools work, but I specifically just wanna give you a bit of a, a tease in terms of what Lexis for Microsoft Office looks like in, in an example here for you. So I've got here a sample brief. So this is just a memorandum in support of a motion to dismiss. So this is a, a simple, you know, a, a sample motion or a memo that I'm drafting, right? So this is a little bit different in terms of what we'd be working on for an appellate brief, but the forms and functionalities are the same in terms of what it would offer you. Let's say I have, I've got my outline finished, I've got it created, and I've written this and I've taken the, the arguments from my, my outline and I've really put them here and I've written this and I've created this document. 
you'll notice that after I download the add-in, and don't worry, I'll show you how to download it, I have the, this little Lexus Nexus icon up here in my Word document. What this gives me the ability to do is it actually gives me the ability to get a ton of different information out of this document. So as I'm drafting and as I'm writing, I could do one of a few things. I can get cited docs, which means Lexis is going to nab all of the citations that I've created in my writing process. And it's actually going to hyperlink all of those documents for me. So if I needed to quickly access them or see all of the available documents that I've cited, I could have that as a list. Same thing as link to sites. That's just going to turn all of your citations into hyperlinks that automatically open into Lexis. But I can also check sites, check quotes, and prepare a table of authorities. And this is going to be a lot of what we talk about next time, right, in the revising process. But as I'm writing and as I'm putting in each one of those sites and quotes, I can go through and check to make sure that those sites and quotes actually match up. So if I'm writing and I'm creating this argument, I could go ahead and check a site, check site format and say, I'm going to check here. I'm looking at blue book format and I want to check these citations to make sure that I'm not missing anything or that there's nothing, you know, there's no error or, 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 or mistake in this document, right? And so it may notice that there are some things that I should change here. For this parent, it's got id at 401. It may have me suggest some of those changes. And so it's going to highlight which ones are correct, which ones maybe are, are recognized but don't conform to the style guide in particular, right? So that we might need to change based on the parent comment here, right? And any kind of context that we have that we need to understand. Now, again, I'm, I'm showcasing you this because I want you to understand some of the nuance associated here. This is, this is one of the things that I think is we're gonna talk about quite a bit in our revision section. Notice this last one right? JC versus Beverly Hills School District, right? Parent, the parent comment is id at 401, okay? Here's the deal though. This id at 401 is associated with the Morris action, right? And so when you're reviewing and as you're writing, you want to make sure that you are catching some of these, these errors here. We have grabbed this citation from JC versus Beverly Hills, but we'd also want to make sure that we're grabbing and writing the Morris citation two. Okay. So when we're grabbing and nabbing these argument sections in this JC versus Beverly Hills case, right, we have that area that we've actually selected, right? We know where that is, but we want to make sure that we're also saying JC versus Beverly Hills district citing, right, Morris. And that's where we put in our Morris citation. Okay. So as you're doing these writing processes and as you're using this software, Think about the context and the concepts that you've, that you've internalized with legal writing and legal research, which is understand that we've captured this citation, which this citation is from JC versus Beverly Hills, but we also want to make sure that we are at least referencing and citing the citation language that JC is capturing here. Again, these are concepts that really are laid out really, really well in tools like appellate practice in federal and state. This is some of the, the really good information that we can talk about when we're, when we're figuring out the writing process, we're matching, we're understanding style considerations, right? We're understa understanding the importance of, of citation and citing correctly, okay? Now, I really think that, that some of this concept is just a really, really great way to, to begin our research. And I wanna end with the last thing that I wanna touch on here for you today in the writing process is I do wanna encourage you to really look at this draft and outline section in the appellate practice in the federal and state. This is such a really good section of information, okay? There is a lot of helpful material here in this drafting and outline section in 1003 here. Uh, I wanted to, to end because I know probably a lot of us are, are in the research phase, right? We're, we're, we're finaliz finalizing our research and we're thinking about that outline process. So I wanted to showcase both appellate practice in federal and state courts. And I also wanted to showcase very quickly a book that I think is really, really valuable. Actually, I'll do it this way. <laughs> I'll pull it up for you. This is a book that I used in, in law school. Uh, and I think that it's really, really valuable and I would highly recommend it. I, I don't know Ross Guberman, um, but I think that this, if you're going to buy a, a book that you're gonna use for the rest of your life, Point Made by Ross Guberman, is really, really lovely. 
not only does it talk about brief writing and motion writing, but it breaks down actually using and structuring your writing to make a solid point. I highly recommend this book. Um, it's you know about twelve to you know nine to twelve dollars in certain places. The hardcover is like twenty six, um, but you can also find it in audiobook and Kindle form as well. So sources like appellate practice in federal and state courts talking about outlining and sources like Point Made by Ross Guberman that really talk about structuring your argument to make the strongest point possible, combine those with the really strong research that you have and some of the tools, right? Like copy citation and uh, Lexis for Microsoft Office give us the ability to combine our strong research, our writing knowledge and our citation foundation to make a really strong brief, okay? Last but not least, before I, I sum things up and ask if there are any questions, I wanna show you how you can find the, uh, the Lexus for Microsoft Office add-in. So it is actually gonna be located up here in the left-hand corner, we've got that product switcher tool. If you go to your law school's option, right, where my, my contact information is and all of the, the LA contact information as well, you'll notice that there is a resources section here at the top. If you click on that resources section, it's going to open all of our lists for law student resources. There's quite a bit of information here, uh, including prepare to practice, key secondary sources here, um, where some of your secondary sources about pellet research will actually be listed. But at the very, very bottom, we also have apps and tools here. Apps and tools, that's where you've got your check your work while you write with Lexis for Microsoft Office. And then it's going to take you to this link where you can get your free access. Um, this tool will be will be valid as long as you have an academic subscription and then you can actually choose extended LMO access after you graduate. Uh, Windows and Mac compatible download process is incredibly easy. Just the installer pops up, you download it. Uh, and we also have a dedicated team that deals with any LMO issues. So if you run into an issue, if something happens while you're working, we have a team, you can contact me uh, and we can also uh, work with our team to do that. Um, as with anything, right, I always recommend you've got either auto save on or saving your features um, as much as possible with, with, with the brief that you're working on. Um, I had an issue with, with pages once on my Mac, um, just a, a fun little writing tip to save as often as you can, regardless of what platform or software you're working on. Um, you don't want to lose helpful material that you've been drafting. But we talked about quite a bit today. We've talked about the writing process and specifically finding materials that will help us at the beginning of that process. Tools like appellate practice in federal and state courts, um, tools like the appellate advocate, and, and, and tools like Point Made by Ross Guberman can really help you understand combining your knowledge about legal research, combining your knowledge about legal writing, and really creating a final product that you can be proud of. You also now know right, how to search for US appellate briefs. It's easy, we just go to the sources tab and we can even type in US Court of Appeals briefs. We can sort, sort through those and find some that might be our position or our opponent's position and get an idea of what we need to know. We then talked about some of the pitfalls with citations, right? How we don't want to very quickly, just as we're building our outline, you know, copy and paste with, within our browser because we might miss some helpful citation materials. But we also realize that we need to be careful about grabbing our citations that we understand that the ids inside them, we also need to reference those as well, okay? We then looked at Lexus for Microsoft Office and found some really cool tools and resources that we can utilize not only as we write, but in our revising process. We're gonna spend so much time next week going over all of the nuance that Lexus for Microsoft Office can do. So what I recommend just for next time, your homework, if you will, is that what we do is we go through, uh, if you can download Lexus for Microsoft Office and give it a shot, um, I can even send you a sample document if you want to, to, to use Lexus for Microsoft Office, get that downloaded uh, and we can, we can go through stuff together. Now, the, the thing that you're probably all waiting for is that I am pleased to announce that uh, we've got Michael Bolt and Michael will be winning the $50 Amazon gift card. Congratulations, Michael. Thanks so much for coming. Uh, everyone will get 350 points for attending. I hope to see you guys here next week. Uh, this will be uploaded. Uh, and it will actually be uploaded on the Lexus for Law School page uh, right here in the announcements section underneath upcoming trainings. Want to catch up on recorded content? That is where my uh, Lexus channel is, Lexus Nexus, the tools to succeed. It's the name that I decided for some reason. Uh, and that's where you'll see last week's section, session. And I also will be uploading today's session 
uh, very soon. So hope you guys enjoyed this. Uh, thank you guys so much for your time. Please stick around if you have any questions. Thanks so much. So Alan